Hi guys, it's Robin with Weight Loss Apocalypse. Okay, here's a really short clip, uh, really short, it's like 10 minutes, of a very long session with this client. Um, we just started working together. She's anorexic, functioning with bulimia, so bulimorexia. And um, she contacted me a few weeks ago. We did a consult and she couldn't decide if she wanted to continue working with me, in part because she hadn't watched any of my YouTube videos, so our consult was a little shocking. She was, I think, expecting to do a round of HCG. And she's like, you know, only has 10 pounds to lose, so when we did our consult, it was really shocking for her to hear first off that she was anorexic, she could be narcissistic. Um, and <laughs> she contacted me two weeks later um, and had decided that she needed to work with me. So anyways, in this uh, section of our session here, she and I are discussing um, binging and how the purge or the diet impacts the size of the binge um, and the overall impulsivity to um, binge and it's how it is relative you know to food addiction or not this was a long session so I'm having a hard time recalling this this clip that I'm actually allowing you to see so you'll have to watch it and if you want to watch the whole video you're gonna go have to go to the patreon account and become a follower and a patron of weight loss apocalypse this supports me it supports my writing it's five dollars a month through PayPal or more if you want to donate more um, you get access to all of the YouTube videos I've posted since I think August, September, August. So there's a lot in there for you to catch up, to catch up on. And the content of most of these YouTube videos is very specific to what is in my, you know, my updated version of Weight Loss Apocalypse and the next video or the next book that's not going to have any HCG included. It's all about the um, Stockholm Syndrome and Thin Supremacy and all that. If you would like to work with me. Uh, my website, there's a link, go there, uh, fill in the information request form. I will get back to you within 24 hours and we'll get you scheduled. So, all right, enjoy this clip. Um, preface here for the listener, your yeah. anorexic, bulimic, how much do you weigh? How much do you weigh right now? Do you know? Um, I'd say around 155. And how tall are you? I'm shy of six feet tall. So you are really so like, lean. You are really lean. Like, I'm like five nine and a half, five ten after yoga, you know. <laughs> and and I'm about one fifty five ish somewhere in there. But this this thing is is I mean. So my point is, are you a good candidate for the protocol? That was my question. Right. And you no, know, if you came into the clinic. Denise and I would look at each other and go, oh, shit, we got an anorexic. <laughs> but I'm not, but I'm. Oh, but because you believe it, right? You feel it. You're like, but it's right. not my best. Oh, my God, Robin, I could be so much leaner. I'm feeling no. horrible about my weight. I'm like six foot and 150. Like, if you saw someone medically, they'd be like, do if they did body comps or whatever, they might actually say, you should potentially gain about 15 pounds, but I don't do that either. It's like, your body's going to naturally regulate itself if you just stop manipulating everything so intensely. And with that said, you're going to have symptoms of starvation, especially since, how long have you been doing this? But not the protocol, starving yourself, binging, dieting, right. bulimia, the purging, the exercise. How long? It's four, probably 14. And I, I had about like a three-year hiatus when I had my first kid. Yeah, my but were you still dieting? Or were you still restricting, just less restrictive? I would say probably just little mini binges. No, I just um, never, 
I didn't try to restrict because every time I did, it would cause a problem. And I really didn't want to do that anymore. But then when I couldn't lose the baby weight, I went back to dieting and I caught and I went back. Yeah. And you were purging, right? Yeah. Yeah. Binge purge diet. Binge purge. Um. Yeah. Okay. And so that's why I question how much physical damage I have just metabolically. That's all. That's why I'm like. Just don't, you know, but you know, well, I've got, I need to have some recovery time first before I even can say, you know, of course my body doesn't feel good right now. <laughs> well, exactly. You're kind of, that, that's the thing. Your body has been, so what happens when someone chronically restricts is your, you become sensitive to food, especially food that is uh, metabolically more yes. powerful, a more powerful stimulant like starches. And so as you restrict those foods, you become incredibly sensitive. The adrenals um, become more sensitive. These are symptoms of starvation. The thyroid suppresses, so your actually energy levels go way down. Um, you might have more kyphotic posture. You know what kyphosis is or kyph kyphotic posture? That's like hunched, hunchback. Um, okay. You might have more headaches. Um, just lethargic. Those are all symptoms yeah. of starvation that you that you've probably yeah. had chronically. And yeah. so when you reintroduce food, you know, if you were to study how to reintroduce food to an anorexic, um, they would say do not start with starches because you're more likely to have a heart attack. So you know, it's kind of like all of those diet gurus out there who are like, low sugar, low starch, no dairy, all this elimination. What they don't realize is happening is food then be, really does become a source of danger. Um, so with anorexics that are hospitalized, it's a very slow process reintroducing food because you're going to shock the organs. Um, and and they'll feel physically ill. They're going to get super bloated. So it's really common. I'm not laughing. No. At fine. this, it, it's just, it's <laughs> just like people come to me not realizing when I eat food, I get super bloated. It's true. And like I'm really sensitive. I'm like, yeah, because you're starving, and that's how the body responds when you starve. It's not necessarily the food. It's the starvation that creates that symptom. Well, it's good to hear. It's good to hear that's all normal. So I definitely have all that. So, was yeah. I, okay. There's a reason why I didn't reply to your messages, by the way. Oh, I figured you would cover it. Well, <laughs> yes, but there's oftentimes when I get messages, if I hear it's you're going kind of down a little bit, I could have been wrong. It's just like, I'm going to let them sit in there. I'm going to let them sit in this. I don't know. I'm yeah. not going to respond to it. Not because I'm being mean. It's just like you need to really sit in where you're at and, and resolve some of these issues for yourself. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we can cover it, too. The being super tired part is a consequence of what you've been doing, and you're going to have to write it out um, and give your t body space to recover, to get in food shape, if you want to call it that. The, the binging and purging, too, so terrible when you, when you really look at how it affects the enamel of your teeth, the esophagus, oh. the yeah. the issues. In um, clients that I've had that have used diuretics, they've had um, blockage issues where they've had to go to the hospital. I've had one client who we had to cancel an appointment because she was in the emergency room with a blockage and she did not tell them she was abusing diuretics. I know. And I was just like, did you tell them that you are abusing diuretics? No. It's like, oh, honey, you know, these are, this is what you get when you try to be thin for healthy. So I've lost at least four teeth because of this. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look at what you've done, had for thinness. I'm willing to lose my teeth for thinness. So I did not think. This is how much I've kind of been in denial about everything, too, is that, yet not in any way, I didn't think I was a binger, Robin. Oh, I know. Week. Well, I'm so happy you see the connection because a lot of people who are anorexic 
don't see that that binge exists because there's a purge. Right. And yeah. the purge is always kind of making things un invisible because there's no damages and I'm not obese. Um, the other yeah. thing is when people think of a binge, people who, who've never really done it or they've got book knowledge around it. So they think that you're going to eat like five loaves of bread and you're going to um, eat like not just the whole bag of chips, but you're going to eat like every the, the massive amount. And that is the case for some people, especially purgers, because if you know, like for me in my bulimia, if I knew I was going to be purging the amount of food that I would binge on met up significantly because I knew I was just going to puke had it out. Times like that. I've, I've had periods like that. Yeah. And then there'll be times where I'll, be, uh, I'll eat it all. Can't eat more purge, eat more purge, eat the rest of it and purge again. Yeah. I don't know if you've done that. You, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. been days. It's not as ugly as it can get. No, oh, that is the worst, isn't it? When you're just like, like rapid All fire, in, binge yeah. purge, binge purge, binge purge, and it's amazing. Yeah. And when soft stuff in between. Yeah, and when you change your purged from actual puking to let's just say exercise. So there, I don't know if that's happened to you too, where you're like, I cannot do this anymore. My teeth are falling out. I'm ruining my teeth. My new teeth that I just put in are now going <laughs> to, I have to take them out before, you know, whatever the issue is. Um, right. I'm going to exercise. And so what happens when you change the purge is the binge starts to change so that it's somewhat equal to each yeah. other, which is amazing yeah. to me because this is clear evidence. This isn't a food addiction problem. Because right. if it was, the purge would have no influence on the, yeah. the binge at all. And so the same thing goes with even someone who is just a strict binge eater. If you change the way that they diet, even if some people don't diet at all, because they're in that perpetual, um, I will fix it later mode. So they're kind of being chased by a famine. They never really get to the famine or the famine never really gets to them, but they're running from a famine. I will never be able to get out again. So that's a binger who never really actually diets. That, that ultimately, when you, when you stop the diet, when, when you get them to the, you're not going to diet for, let's just say, you know, in, in conversation and foresight, you're going to start dieting tomorrow, or we're going to start on Monday. That in, impulsively increases their binge. If you say, look, you're not going to, yeah. you're not going to diet for a year yeah. that desensitizes their binge. It actually, they're still binging. It's just yeah. the binge quantity gets less. a lot less. Yeah. yeah. And that to me is a very clear evidence. This is not about the food. This is about I agree, deprivation. If it was about the food, they couldn't stop themselves no matter what. It doesn't matter. You know? Yeah. Like, so exactly. when you, yeah, so in terms of like differentiating someone who may have a food addiction from someone who has been eating, that would be to me a, a clear test. I have never met someone who the way of fixing the damages didn't change the actual binge. To me, that's, that's body image, right? Yeah. There's a direct body image link. So, but then again, I might not be attracting people who to, to work with me who are strict food addiction people, which. But the thing is, is people don't understand so much about their problems when they come to you though, you know? So it's not like, well, I'm not that kind of a binger. I really am a food addict. I'm not going to go see Robin. You know, it's like. People don't really know, so it's when they're you're sifting it through them. So I see what you're saying about the attraction thing, but I don't really see that being true. I agree because <laughs> I know I'm just giving that to the binge eater yeah. or the food addictor. The so, the person that's food addicted watching this, I just I just try to give that to them. Well, like because okay, so I could be I, wrong. I th there's there's legitimate reality that I'm unaware of and I could be wrong. That is true. I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm so right, right. all the time. No, it's true. And everybody yeah. has a different spin on it too. 